PaintShop Pro 2021 is frequently used for enhancing photos. A collection of sample images is available for use with the procedures presented in this video. Scroll down on the YouTube video page for information on how to acquire the practice images. Open the Sample Images book and turn the page until you find Figure 3 Fall Grass. Left click on the image to select it, then right click on the image and select Copy. Then return to PaintShop Pro and in PaintShop Pro from the menu bar select Edit Paste as New Image. And now we have a nice image on the screen for use in practicing cropping. When you select the crop tool in PaintShop Pro, it will probably display the last cropping area, but you should notice that the cropping tool comes with its own toolbar. Let's take a quick look at what these tools are. Moving from right to left, we have a depth of field adjustment tool. And notice again, whenever you see a little arrow like this, that means when you select that, it'll pop out additional options. There's a one-step photo fix tool, and there's a proportions tool, and here again, there's a little arrow. When you click on that, you'll see a number of different kinds of options. There's a tool to rotate, a composition to guide tool, a clear tool, which will clear off any existing cropping areas, and an option that will allow you to crop to a new image or an option to simply apply the existing crop. Let's see how these work. When I selected the cropping tool, this crop area appeared. If I'm not satisfied with that, I can use the clear tool to clear off any existing crop. Once I've cleared out any existing crop areas, I can use a cropping tool to left click and drag a new area for my crop. Let's take a look at different options available for composition tools. Artists for hundreds of years have used a rule of thirds to help improve the compositions. The rule of thirds simply says you should put important focus areas at the intersections of the thirds and if you have a, a horizon in your image, it should be on one of these horizontal lines, either the bottom third or the top third, depending on what part of the image you're trying to focus on. In addition to the rule of thirds, there is the famous golden spiral. The idea of a golden spiral composition is that the viewer's eye will follow the spiral and eventually focus in on that particular point. You can use the different grab bars on the crop area to adjust the crop. Let's look at some of the other composition options. There's a golden ratio which is slightly different than the golden thirds option and again these depend on the opinion of the viewer as far as which composition would be the best. There is a diagonal type layout doesn't lend itself to this particular composition necessarily, but it does to many compositions. There's a triangular layout, and there's a grid, where you can use the grid to help line things in your composition. Let's go back to the golden spiral option, and notice I'm trying to put the vanishing point at the end of that spiral. Right now, we're set for freeform. If we pop this option down, you can see we can go back to the last applied. Then we have certain aspect ratios that are preset. For example, if I was cropping this to fit my 16 by 9 computer screen or video display, I could select that and then my cropping box would automatically be at the 16 9 aspect ratio. Notice that it went full width of the image, so I always have the option now to drag this, but notice that in the 16 by 9 option, that when I drag the corner, my crop area is limited to 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So I can fool around with this until I find something that I like.
or in addition to 16 by 9 there's also 8 by 10 if you were cropping for 8 by 10 photograph or 4 by 5 or 16 by 20 or anything with those proportions and you can also crop to a square proportion in this example I think I'll go ahead and use the 16 by 9 aspect ratio and then I move this around and I'm going to with with this spiral I'm going to put that spiral right there at the vanishing point and I check to side by side to see if I have what I want one of the rules of composition is to try to use an existing vertical line as a frame so by moving this around a little bit I can have that tree be the frame and have that vanishing point be the, s the center of interest of my spiral. Now that I've set the cropping parameters, I, can, I have a choice. I can either accept this, have the current image with this cropping, or I can crop as a new image. I'm going to do that. And now you notice I have a brand new image on the screen and that's in addition to the original image. So I've been able to preserve the image, create a new crop, and make a brand new image from that. Now that I have two different images open in different windows in PaintShop Pro, I'll take a minute to see how we can display these images. Right now I'm using the tabbed format, so I have a tab to click on. Let me just un get out of the cropping tool there so I see the whole image. I can use the tab to switch from one image to another when more than one image is open. On the menu bar, if I select Window and slide down, you can see right now the Tab Documents option is selected. What if I use Cascade? You see now they're stacked up and I can switch back and forth in the stack just by clicking them. Or I can use, I can tile horizontally. I'm using the wheel in my mouse to zoom in and out on a particular selected image. Let's go to the tile vertically, just what you'd expect. And then I can close documents or close all the open images. And I can do some other things. I can duplicate, I can fit to window, fit to the screen. And this reminds me of the two images that are currently open. For now, I'm going to go back and use the tabbed option. And that way I can scroll in and out and have them fill my canvas area as I switch between them. I'm assuming that once you've done some work cropping or modifying an image that you'll probably want to save that so that you can find it again. Unfortunately, many beginners tend to save everything on the desktop. If you save everything to the desktop, it won't be long before your desktop is unmanageable. So in this case, let's take control. We'll go back to the original image and I want to save my own copy of this so I'm going to use the tool file save copy as and then in the file save copy as dialog box I need to locate the place where I want to put them and I've gone ahead and on my system I've created a folder that I'm titling part 2 practice now I have to enter a file name for this image there are many file formats available that you can save images with in PaintShop Pro. The default format is a PaintShop Pro image. That's a good format to use if you want to go back and rework your image. However, no one else will be able to open the PaintShop Pro image files unless they have their own copy of PaintShop Pro. So I'm going to switch this to a more common file format and that's JPEG. And next I have to create a name for the image and I've decided to name it Fallgrass Original and then I'll save. Then I'm going to go to my cropped image and I'm going to save that image. So again I'm going to do File, Save Copy As. 
Fortunately, PageShop Pro remembers the last place where you saved images. So now I'm already in my Part 2 Practice folder, and now I'm going to create a name for this image. And when you name your images and you name your folder locations, you need to figure out your own organization scheme that will help you recover the image someday in the future. In this example, PaintShop Pro gives me this little warning or this little question dialog box and it said it reminds me that using this file format which is a jpeg format uh, this the save file will be limited to a merged image in other words i'm going to lose any steps or changes or undos or whatever that i went through when i created the image they would be present if i saved a paint shot pro image but i'm not interested in preserving those i'm just interested in creating the jpeg file so I encourage you, as you go through this project, to create your own special storage locations, your own special folders, and your own special naming convention, so that a year from now, or two years from now, you will have some chance of recovering these images. I can't encourage you enough to establish early an organization scheme for saving your files. Without such a scheme, you're going to be frustrated in a year or two trying to locate a file. You know that you created it at some point, but you have no idea where it is. The moral of the story is get organized. If you're new to Windows and the Windows File Management System, you might be wondering what the difference is between Save, Save As, and Save a Copy As. If you just use the Save tool, it will replace the image that was originally opened. In this case, since we imported the image from another document, your system might have a hard time replacing that original image. File Save As option will automatically open the folder that the picture or the image came from, and it does give you the opportunity to change the name, which means that the original picture would be saved. However, I recommend using the file Save Copy As option whenever you want to take control of where your files will be stored. The Save Copy As dialog box allows you to find a folder, or it also allows you to find a particular path in your system and within that area add a new folder. And then you can create the new file name. The most powerful option available for those that want to actually take control of where their files are stored is to use the file save copy as option and then take advantage of the dialog box to control where your images will end up. However, if you use the file save as option, it does nothing to the open images. You notice these images still remain the same. They haven't changed the name of the or location of the original open images. So if you want to work on any images that were saved, you have to go and open those. I'm going to say Windows, close all, and then I'm going to open, and then I will go and locate the folder where I stored my images, and this open dialog box shows me the path of where my particular files are located, and there they are. And now I can select one of those image thumbnails and then click on Open. And now, notice that in the tab it actually gives the name of the saved image, not the name of the original one that was there before. Let's take a look at the picture frames option in PaintShop Pro. I've already loaded my fall grass crop image and now I'm going to add a picture frame. So let me go to image, picture frame, and that opens the picture frame dialog box. In that dialog box I can choose a picture frame style and in my installation you can see I have a lot of picture frames here. 
If you have not installed the Creative Content add-on, your system will not show this many picture frames. Even if you do add the Creative Content add-on, you may not see this many. I'll confess, I've been using PaintShop Pro for many, many years, over 30 years, and every time a new edition came out, I would buy it and install it, and many different editions or many different versions of PaintShop Pro came with add-ons of picture frames, picture tools, brushes, and whatever. Well, I've managed to do a little file exploration and find out where those picture frame files are and where the picture tube files are, and I've managed to copy those files from some of my old installations of PaintShop Pro and insert them into the new installation of PaintShop Pro. So as a result, I probably have more picture frames than most people do in their collection. Let's just go to select a picture frame. I think I'm going to try the gold picture frame. Now I have options to either frame inside the image or frame outside the image. I also have an option to flip the frame, mirror the frame, rotate the frame. In this case, it doesn't make a lot of difference for this particular style frame. So once I've selected my frame and options, I'll say OK. And there's my picture nicely framed. There's a lot of things you can do with picture frames. Even the picture frame, like the simple gold picture frame, you can double it up and make even a fancier picture frame. Let's just let's just rotate the frame to the right and let's add it again. And you see what I've done? I've enhanced my picture frame by putting picture frame on top of picture frame. So there's all kinds of fun you can have with picture frames. I'm going to undo the picture frames that I added and explore the picture frame options a little more. So I'll say image, picture frame, and let's take a look at the picture frame styles again. There's a classic antique thing here we can use. That's kind of fun. Let's look at some more. There are some that are seasonal and theme related, and there are some that are more generic. Here's a classic oval, and this provides a mat. If I choose that picture frame, I can actually go ahead and use the flood fill tools to modify the uh, colors of this this mat and let's see what what would I like to do here I think maybe I'll mess around just for just for the demonstration purposes and then I can crop recrop this and clear the crop and crop here manually and accept that and then add a frame to that framed image and as you can see the options are endless and you can have all kinds of fun exploring the different picture frames and you can use your own artistic interpretation of how to present your pictures or how to enhance your pictures using picture frames There are times when you have a photograph where the horizon seems to run downhill. This issue is typically most noticeable when a scene includes a lake or an ocean. However, it can also happen in normal pictures as well. If you take a picture where the axis of the camera lens was not pointed perpendicular to an object in a the picture, there will be perspective distortion. PaintShop Pro has tools to deal with both slanted horizons and perspective distortion situations. For this project, we'll open up the sample image book that's available and we'll jump ahead to the page that shows Figure 4, the Fall Street image. So I'll left click to select that image, 
Then I'll right click to copy the image and then return to PaintShop Pro. And in PaintShop Pro, I'll select Edit, Paste as New Image. If you closely examine this image, it appears that the horizon is just kind of slanting downhill to the left. So let's use a tool that will fix that slanting horizon. From the column of tools, I'll select the Straighten tool. And notice this has a horizontal horizon line. And if you get right on that, you can drag that around. And you can get a hold of the end grabber and adjust it until the horizon looks horizontal. And once you've adjusted that straighten line, you select Apply. And now this picture looks like it has a proper horizon line. Now let's copy another file that has a problem with distortion. I'll return to the sample image book. And in the sample image book, I have two different photographs that show the perspective issue. I think I'll go ahead and use figure two for this example. So I'm going to select that image, then I'll right click, then I'll say copy the image and return to PaintShop Pro. And I can say edit, paste as new image again. And now I have two images open in PaintShop Pro. And this is the one I'll use for the perspective correction. So from the toolbar, instead of selecting the straighten tool, I'll click the little down arrow and select the perspective correction tool. And that puts a little box here. And now the, the trick is to drag the corners of this correction box to corners of my image that amplify the distortion. So a little work here. Try to grab the right place. You might have to do a little bit of tweaking. You can zoom in a little bit. And I think this is pretty good now. Okay, once I have that set, I go ahead and select Apply. And now I can go ahead and use the Crop tool to create a new image, which will have that distortion eliminated. Let me crop that as a new image. And now I can compare the new image with the original image. When I look at this cropped image, it looks like I could have improved my cropping a little bit. So let me do that now. Select the crop tool. This time I'm going to go wider so that I can fine tune this just a little bit to get rid of that black line. Okay, now I'm happier with that. Here are the two tools to add to your PaintShop Pro collection. First, when you have a slanted horizon, you can use the straighten tool and fix that slanted horizon. When you have distortion that needs to be corrected because the camera was not pointing perpendicular to the scene, you can use the perspective correction tool and fix the problem. New digital cameras, even many that are priced under $100 in the U.S., can create high-resolution images. For example, the original Fall Street image was taken with a 12-megapixel camera, and the original image was 4,000 by 3,000 pixels in size. If you're adding images to word processing documents or web pages, or if you're emailing images, a 4,000-pixel image is overkill and will have an unnecessarily large file size and result in slow email transmission rates. Most of the sample images included in the sample image document were reduced to a width of 1024 pixels to keep the file size as a document manageable. PaintShop Pro 2021 makes it easy to resize your pictures to a manageable file size. And by the way, if you're printing and you're worried about pixelation in your printing, an image size of 1024 pixels can be enlarged to an 8x10 print without any loss of quality. 
if you want to print billboards or something larger than 8x10, or if you want to do a lot of serious cropping from an image, then you will want to have the 4000 pixel version of the image. Suppose that we would like to email this image to one of our friends, and we want to reduce the image size to 600 pixels wide. In PaintShop Pro, we'll select the Resize tool, and we'll lock the aspect ratio on, and then we'll set a new width of 600, and that automatically sets a new height as well, and there are other options that we could be using, but this is a basic one for simply resizing an image. And we'll say OK. And now, if we inspect the size of this image down here, we'll see we've created a new image that's 600 pixels wide. I've imported another one of the sample images into PaintShop Pro. If you inspect this image, you'll see that it's only 305 pixels wide. If I zoom in here a little bit, you can see that the, the individual pixel size is pretty pronounced. And ordinarily, if I would enlarge this image, those pixels would also get enlarged and it would make it worse. However, in PaintShop Pro 2021, there's some new features so that when you enlarge images, they will be improved. Before I do the resizing, I think I'd like to straighten this picture up a little bit. So let me select the straighten tool and let's see what I can do here to try to make this a little better. Okay, now if I look at the doorway, it looks a little more vertical and the siding is a little closer to horizontal and the people don't seem to be leaning over as much except for grandpa here let me crop this version get right in on these people and now you can see i've reduced the image size even further to only 247 pixels wide and you can start to see those pixels even at this magnification but let me go ahead and apply the resize tool here. And let me change the horizontal resolution to 1024. That will also increase the vertical resolution. And notice that I'm using the advanced and AI powered settings. And this artificial intelligence setting will really help improve the image after it's enlarged. So select OK. Now this one's going to take a little while so it's got a lot of calculations going on. You see the horizontal bar down at the bottom of the screen that's showing me the time left. Now this is zoomed way in and you can already see the big improvement in the pixelation on this image. And so the resizing tool works both ways and in PaintShop 2021 Resizing to increase the size of an image can improve the image considerably. PaintShop Pro gives us a lot of tools to fix old photographs or enhance photographs. Here's one of the samples from the sample book that accompanies this set of videos. This is an old photograph of a school group from Scandia, Pennsylvania that was scanned into the computer and it needs a lot of help. First thing we're going to do is let's, let's do a little cropping here and uh, see what we can do to make this look a little better. Yeah, let's crop here. Don't want to lose these kids on this side, do we? Okay. Well, that's, that looks a little better. Got rid of some of that perimeter around the scan. Let's take a look at some of the tools that PaintShop provides for improving a photographs like this. The first one is from the menu bar, select Enhance Photo and choose the One Step Photo Fix. And that did a little bit for improving this photo. Not a lot. Let me undo that. And let's go to 
the Smart Photo Fix tool. And that opens up a dialog box here. And we have a number of adjustments to experiment with. We can adjust the overall brightness up and down. We can see what happens when we use, use the shadow slider. The highlights we can make brighter or we can make darker. And we can actually try to sharpen the image a little better than the scan. We can also adjust the saturation but uh, this original was a black and white photo although the scan created a color image. We'll deal with that in a little bit here. There's a couple of adjustments here. This was the original and we can make the blacks blacker and we can make the whites whiter and we can play around with that. You see what's going on here. You just have to experiment with this to see what looks better to you. And you can try to match these little suggestions there on that little graph. Well, let's cancel this and look at another approach. First, since this originally was a black and white photograph, I'm going to go to Image and change this to a grayscale image. And now with this as a grayscale image, I'm going to select Adjust, Brightness and Contrast, and then I'm going to use the Histogram Adjustment tool. And this gives me a lot of places to experiment with. Make sure that the Preview on Image is selected. And now over here, I can slide this up and down and see what effects that has. There are no number settings that I can give you because each photograph is going to be a little different and you're just going to have to adjust here and play around until you like what you see. Then we can adjust the gamma and we can do this with these sliders. And you just have to slide one way or the other until you get it the way you like it. And then you can adjust the low slider, the high slider, and you see these move back and forth. And you can just keep experimenting until you find a version that you like. And once you find something that you think is an improvement, just select OK. One of the problems with this old photo is that the lighting is different on the right side than it is on the left side. And when we adjust these parameters to get the right side better, the left side is not necessarily better. We can do a selection trick to work on only parts of this photo at the time. I'm going to go here to my selection tool and choose the freehand selection. And then I'm going to capture these girls over here. And I'm going to go off here. I'm going to have to make, I have to complete the circle. So I go up and around. And when I let go, you'll see now I have a selected area. And now when I use my adjustment tool, brightness and contrast, histogram adjustment, now it's only going to be applied to the current selection. And now the trick is to try to balance between the left and right side of the picture. So this takes a little bit of trial and error before you can really be satisfied. However, um, let me deselect here, say selection none. However, if you compare this image with the original, you'll see we've come a long way in improving or enhancing this old photograph. There are some additional tricks I could use to fix this up. For example, I might want to change the siding where I see this big difference here in the siding color. And there's an old scratch here. We'll get into some tools a little later to see how to fix those kind of things. Here is another image that was imported from our book of samples. This is a typical fall scene. Probably the sky was a little cloudier and the 
contrast here could be improved on. There are several ways we can try to improve this photograph. The first one is always to see what one step photo fix will do. Uh, not bad, but let me undo that. And let's try the smart photo fix. And you can see some subtle improvements here. And you can adjust these parameters to see if in adjusting shadows or whatever will will improve it. And you may want to just experiment a little bit to see if you can make this more to your liking. But in this example, I'm going to cancel this. In this example, I want to demonstrate the vibrancy tool. So I'm going to select adjust hue and saturation vibrancy. This tool can be very dramatic in its changes, especially if you have a, a scene like this fall scene that lighting is fairly flat. Let me just adjust the strength of this to see what happens. Wow, I can make this really vivid. Or I can make it almost like a black and white photo. So again, you're going to have to go in and just play around and see what your eyes tell you is the best adjustment for this particular photo. If I compare my original image with the image where I've enhanced it by adjusting the vibrancy, you can see that I've made a fall foliage picture with a lot more punch than the original. Next we'll experiment a little bit with digital noise removal. This is another image imported from our sample book. And this was actually scanned from an old newspaper photograph. And there are two things going on here. One is the uh, quality of newspaper reproduction to start with. And this may be better than you expect from a newspaper. But if we look at the original photograph, it was obviously taken in low light and there's a lot of noise especially visible in the darker areas. You see all that speckling? That's digital noise. Let's see what PaintShop can do about that. So we're going to select Adjust Digital Noise Removal. And again, we'll have a before and after section. And we have a number of things we can adjust. This is noise correction. We could just experiment with these. And notice that these are linked here. Now you have to compare this side and this side. Um, that removed a lot of the speckles, but it also fuzzed it out a lot. Let's put that back to 50. And let's look at the correction blend number here. Let's slide that down to zero just to see what that's doing. Again, it's... Uh, not done too much for us in this example. Let's try max. And then I have to press the tab key to enter that actually. And now look at the noise here. A lot of the digital noise has been removed, but some of the area here in the text is not quite as contrasty as it was before. Now let's try the sharpening option. Right now it's at zero. I put that at max and press tab. And you see, still have quite a bit of noise there. And that sharpening didn't do a lot for the text here as well. So let's put that back down. And I think this was better at maybe 70. Yes, that's quite a bit better. So once again, this is a situation where you need to experiment with these different parameters. Let's just cancel out of this. Go back to the original and look at one-step noise removal and see how that does. Okay, that gets rid of a fair amount of this noise. And let's leave it at that. And let's look at another way to enhance this photo a little bit. First of all, I'm going to crop this, this newsprint out of there. Not necessary for what I want to use this picture for. So I'll start with a new crop.
and I think I'm a little low. Don't want to chop Oliver's head off. Okay. And now I'm going to look at a tool here called Lighten and Darken. And that tool has a, a size to it. I can change the size by changing the number here. Or there's a shortcut to changing the size of this and a lot of the other brushes. If I hold the Alt key down and then I left click and move the mouse, and if I move the mouse back and forth or up and down, I can dynamically change the size of that brush. In the case of the light and darken brush, it says click and drag to lighten, right click and drag to darken. So if I want to darken this area here, I'm going to use the, the right click. And if I'm careful, I can darken this so that all of this unnecessary background goes away. And if I'm patient, I can clean this up quite a bit. And I can keep working on this by changing the size of the brush and just going almost like painting, darkening things in. On the other hand, I could also just go ahead and pick the paintbrush tool and set, set a size for the paintbrush. And I could manually, with my foreground color set to black, I could manually paint all around this, all over the accordion player until I get rid of all the unnecessary or unwanted things. And if you're patient, you can actually do a nice job. You might have to zoom in and out to get close for the details, but you can actually clean up this and get rid of all of the unnecessary background and improve the portrait considerably. If you're very patient and take a lot of time at it, do a lot of zooming in and out, you can take an old newspaper photograph like this with a very busy background and you can turn it into something like this with a very plain black background. Once you're this far along, there's another trick to add to your toolbox and that's in the selection options. There's a smart selection brush. And let's see what happens if I come over here in this dark area and I do a smart selection. Notice how it went and went around and it found all of these edges. And so now the selection is the entire area around the accordion player. And once I have this selection made, I can go and select my flood fill tool, choose anything to replace this black area with by flood filling, maybe this blue gradient. And you see that there are a couple of areas here that it missed, and I can go back and touch those up. I'm going to undo that. Maybe I'll go in and select some pattern. Perhaps I might want to use uh, the rice paper pattern. And I can try that. And if I don't like that, I can undo and I can keep experimenting with this as you can see. There are some other old photographs that have been scanned and copied into our sample picture book. Let's examine a couple of more tricks for enhancing photographs. I'm going to select this picture and right click, copy the image, go back to PaintShop Pro, and I'm going to edit, paste as new image. And of course, this new image needs to be rotated so that it looks proper. And notice that we have a rotate left and a rotate right tool. I'm going to rotate this. And you can see there's been a lot of damage to this photograph. The photograph's been scratched pretty bad here and a couple of other places. 
Let's explore using the scratch removal tool. Over here on our column of tools, if we look at the pop-outs here, we have a clone tool, smart clone, object remover, and scratch remover. Let's take a look at the scratch remover option for now. And let's see how this works. If I click and drag, you'll see a line there. Actually, I need to enlarge that so that you can really see what's going on with this line. Let me exaggerate this quite a bit. I click and drag. This is a little more than I need, but you notice that this scratch remover is divided into three areas. The center area is going to be where the scratch is. The computer will take what's in the two outer areas and copy them into the center scratch area. So this is a, a little bit too large for that scratch. So let me reset the, the scratch remover width to about 100 here and see how that works. Now click and now I drag across that scratch and magic it's gone. Let me zoom in here so you can see how this works. Click, drag and now watch what's in the outside areas and how it gets mushed into that center area. So this scratch remover will work on long scratches or it'll work on little small scratches anytime you want to replace an area where there's an obvious scratch. Here's a scratch here that may be smaller, so let's resize the, the tool a, a bit. And let's see how I got it this time. Scratch, click. See how I missed there a little bit, so let me undo. And let me make the tool a little bit wider and click and drag. Now when the scratch gets curved, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to remove move it, always trying to go in a direction that will not have any of that outside area be a different color. So I can keep working here and I can remove these scratches one by one, a little bit at a time until I'm satisfied. So this retouching business takes a lot of patience and a lot of time. And you can just work through these scratches and zoom in and out until you're happy with, with what you have. The major scratches are really nice to be able to just go click and have them disappear. Click, make it disappear. Now, you see how this works. So it's just a matter of going in and adjusting the scratch remover size and clicking and dragging and gradually removing the scratches or even some of the small collections of spots. There's a similar tool that we can use and that's in the same area and it's called the clone tool. The way the clone tool works is we have to right click on an area that we want to capture and then click and drag to clone that area. So let me zoom in here a little bit. And then with my clone brush I'm going to right click and capture an area and then I'll move down and I'll left click and that will capture that stuff and replace it. Let's do it right here. Notice the area that's captured, and now notice what happens. It takes that colored area and replaces the area under the brush. And you have to keep changing the direction and the origin of the clone. And you can do a lot of work again. This requires a lot of patience, a lot of changing of direction, but you can get in here and you can clone a lot of these old pieces of dirt spots on the picture right out of there. The Smart Clone tool is very similar except that capture a different shaped area and then use that as a paintbrush to paint over other places if you're careful. So capture an area and paint with that area. Well with an old photograph that's as badly damaged as this one. You can actually clean it up very nicely, but it will take a lot of work to do so. 
a lot of zooming in and out and a lot of detail. Now, suppose that I would like to just pull Grandpa Nassman right out of this photograph and make a photograph with him by himself. To do that, I'm going to click over here and select the Object Remover tool. And now I'm going to just capture an area here. I'm just sketching around Grandpa Nassman. And I'm going to have a little more than I need here, perhaps. Now I've selected him. And now that I've selected him, I can copy, Control C, and then I can say Edit, Paste as a new image. And now I have Grandpa Nassman all by himself. And now I can zoom in and use any of the techniques before. Uh, the clone tool to clean up the little blemishes, or the selection tools, smart selection brush, you try to select areas, uh, and uh, this is set, the background is set for white. So if I select that area, then I can capture it. And with a little work here, whoops, that went too far, didn't it? So let's unselect that. And let's go in and use the freehand selection tool. First of all, I still have this area selected, you notice by the dash lines, so I'm going to say select none. And then I'm going to use the freehand selection tool. Try to get in here and select this part. And delete that. And I can use a combination of selection tricks and just plain painting tricks by selecting the paintbrush. I can just go here and I can paint these areas. Right now the density is set to 48. I think I'll set the density to 100%. And again, I can carefully work around, work around, and uh, get rid of all this. Now down in this area, to get rid of this hand, I'll use a little bit of an artistic license here. I'm going to paint white over that part of the fingers and I'm going to use the clone tool and clone part of Grandpa's coat to cover up the fingers in that area. With a lot of careful work and a little bit of time, you can clean up Grandpa Nassman and you can go from this old beat up photograph to something that you can frame and hang on the wall. So now I offer you a challenge. Go through the sample book of images, open them in PaintShop Pro, and see if you can duplicate some of these examples. All of these were made from the different images that are found in the PaintShop Pro samples book. And with a little work and effort, you will soon be an expert photo retoucher using PaintShop Pro 2021.